In the previous lesson, we got ourselves set up to make a book by creating a collection right over here. Now, a collection isn't a book. A collection could wind up being a slideshow, a print, a web, could be anything. Ours will eventually wind up being a book. So I'm back in the library. I do have Photo Spin selected over here, and I'm going to go right back into book. It's kind of where we left off in the previous lesson. Here is our, I suppose, generic book. Lightroom thinks, hey, let's start out here. Now, I'll show you how we can change that. It's no big deal. But let's look at what we have. What can we use to make a book? Number one, we have the old preview that follows us along. You select a page over here, and you say fit, and it will be more than glad to show it to you. So you can work on it. I have a one-on-one, -on -one, and I have a four-on-one. -on -one. If I come down here, I can go back to multi-page, double page, or single. Let's go back to multi for now. Over here, it says it's unsaved. Now, if you go way over here, you see a create saved book option. If you select it, you can give it a name. Now, we'll do this later, but that's how you save it. Over here, you can clear the book out. You say, well, you know what? I know you think I want all these images just like this, in this order, exactly like this, but I don't. I want to work it myself. So if you click clear book, it will take all of that away for you. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you start with a clear book and you go back to library and you choose something else, now I'm just going to go back to photo spin and you go back to book, it's going to make the same assumption that you want to work it. But remember, if you do make changes and you leave and come back, even though it's not saved, it will respect your changes. Now, down here, you do have an option to kind of go through the pages if you want to use it, but you can use your left and right arrow keys and your up and down arrow keys to do the same thing. You can change the thumbnails here, make them bigger or smaller, but you can also use your plus or minus keys to achieve the same goal. Let's look at our options over here. Number one is book settings. Open that up. Now in book settings, it defaults to book to blurb. You can go blurb, which is actually a publishing service, PDF or something that's new in Lightroom 5 JPEG. You have all three right here if you want to use them. Let's leave it on blurb for now. You can choose a size for your book. Right now it's standard landscape. We can change that to something else. You could say, well, I think I like a large square. And it will say, well, you want me to do that for you? I'm going to say, yeah. And it will be more than glad to change that for you. Let's go back to maybe a standard landscape. Cover. You want a cover? Hardcover image wrap, hardcover dust jacket, that's kind of professional, or a soft cover. Paper type, now they've got a new one. They've added standard. Standard's very standard, inexpensive paper, so it cuts the cost down if you want to use it. And you can go all the way up to premium luster. That actually is quite nice, that premium luster paper. Now, logo page. Now, before we get there, look down here. The estimated price is £26.48. Now, that's in British pounds, obviously. That's excluding VAT. But I'm U.S., and that would be $39.21. What's a logo page? A logo page is this page right here that says that basically it is done by Blurb and done in Lightroom. Let me go back to thumbnails here. If I decide I don't want anybody to know that, watch what happens to my price. Now I'm back to US, it's $39.21. 47, almost $8 more to take out the fact that it was made with blurb. To me, it's worth it. I'll put it back in. That's the settings for book settings. The next is auto layout. Now in auto layout, we have a clear here just like we have up here. And if I say clear layout, it will clear the layout. I can say auto layout here. So I don't have to go back to the library and come back in if I want to reset it. But that's not the only thing. The default is it's going to slam one photograph per page. Nothing else, just pages and pages of photographs, which is fine. But if you come up here, it says one photo per page. You can change that. You can say left blank or right blank. You could say like, let's do this one. And then clear the layout and do an auto. So it changed it. Now you can also, if we come back up here, go into Edit Auto Layout Presets and create your own. We could say Same as Right Side. We could say Random from Favorites. We'll talk about Favorites later. We can say a Fixed Layout, in which case we can choose what we want on this side and what we want on this side. Click Save. We'll call it New Layout. 
and click Create. Now there it is. So we can clear this one and try that one. So how you put this together and how it defaults when you first open it up is based right here. Now if we get back in there, we can go into Edit again and say, you know, I really don't like that one. That was kind of crazy. And if I come up here, I can say Delete it. I can also come back up here again and say left blank, right blank, whatever you want, or restore default presets. Click update the preset. Come back in here, and we can go back into, say, for example, one photo per page. Clear it. Auto layout. We're back to where we were. Page. I love this in Lightroom 5. It becomes so much easier to add page numbers. So let's go to a page like this so we can see it. Come over here and just add the page numbers. And you can see it easier on this one. Now we can change the text on that. We'll talk about that later. But this one's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can go to a page that's a little bit easier for that. Maybe this one here. Yeah, you can kind of see it over here. Now you've got bottom corner, top corner, top side, bottom up to you. What's this? Well, we're on page. So we look at this one right here and we say, I don't want just one on that one page. I want something else. So we click here and we can choose a different layout. So let's say we decide to go to two photos. You got all these different things up here you can check through. We go to two photos and we say something like, oh, film strip. That's kind of cool. Nah, I like this one. Now it does that and you choose what you want to add for the second photograph. If we go back into our thumbnail view, you can see that one page is now different. And it also says down here two because we're using him twice. Now you can add pages, which would be just like this page, or add blank pages if you want to right from here. The next one is guides. Let's go open up an image again like this one. You have page bleed. You can see you can turn that on or off. And that's the area it bleeds off when it prints. Text safe areas, photo cells themselves, and filler text. Now that adds filler text into boxes that don't have any text in them. So you can see there's text there. Next one down is cell. Now in cell you have padding. For example, if I want to add some space around this image on this page, I can go into a mount and pull it like that and do something like that if that's what you want to do. If you open it up right here, you can control each one individually if that's what you want to do. So I can go into left right now and just move it over like that. Total control. Down here is text. Now one of the things I love that's new in Lightroom 5 is if you select an image, it's very easy to add page text now or photo text. If we go into type and see that button down there? See that's new. I love that. Just click it, boom. You can add text. You can see all the different things just like typesetting. Change the font, change anything you want to right here if you want to go that route. And we do, and we'll do that later though. Let's come down a little bit further and go into background. Now the background of an image is behind the photo. So if the photo is filling the page, it doesn't matter what the background is, you're not going to be able to see it. But in this case, we did reduce this guy right here, so we do have a background. Now we can choose to just do a color by clicking here, or we can do a graphic. Let's do that first. Now I have an image, this one right here, that's kind of like a painted wall. So I'm going to drag that up here like this. And you can see it back here. It's a watermark. If I click on the image, I can go over here. Now that means this is available if I want to use it again since I've used it once. But if I click up here, we have things like travel and we have things like wedding. So if I decide maybe I want something more like a map behind there, I can use that instead. Now it's kind of hard to see. So what I'll do is go into background color and add a background color coming up here, maybe coming in like this and darkening or lightening it up just a little so we can see it. I have chosen to apply the background globally, which means if we go back to thumbnails, of course you can't see it on any of these because they're full images, but I do believe if we come down here, you can see it on this one right here. Usually if I'm doing a background, it's going to be global. And the reason for that is I want consistency between the pages. If it's full of an image, you're not going to see it. That's fine. But if it's down like this, you'll have that background behind it. And it can be a photograph or it can be anything you want. And you can apply them globally or not. Again, if I click here, there they are. And there's my photo or photos if I choose more than one. 
all the different options that you have over here. Control everything that's going on over here to produce a one-of-a-kind book.